Okay, I've got that cylinder hit off. Didn't take too long. And this spark plug is the one that was in the right cylinder. As you can see, it was burning nice and happy, a nice toasty brown there. This one, on the other hand, it's kind of spooky looking. <clears throat> it uh, it almost resembles sandpaper with a sort of a metallic hue to it. What you're looking at is aluminum that's been kind of spray welded all over the center electrode of that spark plug. And uh, of course, with all that heat, it's removed any little soot deposits that are in the combustion chamber and uh, the exhaust valve is... is I got a nice little coating of aluminum on it too. That won't hurt the valve. And I will rub that off of there when I put the engine back together. But anyway, ta-da! There's what happened. Luckily, the bores look to be safe. I don't see any gouging or scraping in the bores, so I probably won't have to get a rebore done on the engine, which is cool. I just got a couple of new pistons for it. I don't see the point in putting one piston in. If I change, if I change one, I usually change both of them. And uh, I'll just show you that little issue that happened under the seat here. This post on the coil, I hope you can see that. I've just got the wire wrapped around it. That's so that we could get some ignition going to that plug while we were testing the bike and trying to get it running and uh, the clip was just like that one there or all the other ones anyway it just decided to break off and when that uh, right hand cylinder stopped working the left one kept working and it was doing just too much work and it was trying to push Dave and the bike down the road while also driving an air compressor on the other side so it was just too much for it if you ever want to try taking one of these two-cylinder bikes home on one cylinder, be very careful. Don't drive them too hard. If I was going, to, if I was inclined to do it, I don't think I'd go more than about third gear and maybe 25 miles an hour because, you know, this sort of thing can happen very easily. It's not the first time I've seen it. and Well, it may not be the last. I might be getting older, but uh, people are still going to be blowing holes in pistons. So I still have to take that cylinder off of there and, uh, and get the piston off. I'll be checking the, uh, the con rods out while I've got everything out just to make sure the end clearance is still good. And uh, Meanwhile, it's a semi-nice day outside. Uh, we haven't had much of a summer here in Nova Scotia this year. It's really been disappointing, you know, just probably about six out of seven days that it's been raining. And now it's fall, so summer's gone. Hopefully, maybe we'll get a few nice days in the fall, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> anyway, I'm going for coffee. I'll get that cylinder head off after lunch. Or cylinder, I mean, off after lunch. All right, back from coffee. I think we had a nice time chatting with my friends, and one of the guys who used to own this bike when it was in a project state, uh, he told me quite a... Quite a couple of little, quite a few little interesting things that I'd forgotten about this bike. <clears throat> anyway, I did remember that the crankcase halves were not matched when I was putting it together because uh, the deck heights, front and rear, were not the same when I went to both the crankcase halves together. And I said, well, I can't put that together because they're not matched. You know, the, uh, the camshaft bushings are not going to line up, and Lord only knows if the... Uh, if the crank bushings are even lined. So uh, anyway, wound up getting this uh, other set of crank cases. The rest of the bike, it, it really is a hodgepodge. It's made from a whole bunch of different parts. Uh, there were even stuff from a five-speed transmission and with that box full of stuff. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of beside the point, but it was interesting. And anyway, with the connecting rods, I was a little bit uh, worried about the... Uh, the connecting rod bushings there on the on the uh, Conrad journals, but they're perfect. If you hold the bottom of the connecting rod up against the cheek of the crankshaft and then try to tip the the top of the Conrad back and forth, there's almost no movement at all there, and that tells me that those bearings down in here are in absolutely perfect condition. So I don't need to worry about them, but I do need to flush that crankcase out because it is just full 
<clears throat> little bits of aluminum grit from uh, exploding that poor old piston in there. It's a darn shame because uh, this bike had been working so good, but I mean, it just overheated, just got way too hot. And when the metal got soft enough, the compression pressure just blew that uh, top right out of that piston down into the crankcase. So like I say, that's going to have to be flushed and flushed and flushed to make sure there's nothing nasty in there or anything. And then uh, I'll probably, I will definitely be taking the time and cover off. I'll be disassembling the oil pump and uh, making sure all the passages are clear because you don't want any of that uh, little aluminum grit getting in under those balls and those uh, in those plungers because uh, that will stop the pump from working and then the fun will be over again. So uh, meanwhile, I also found out at coffee that these pistons and oops, those cylinders are from a 750 kit. That would explain why the bike had so much get up and go. And uh, there's one little thing I wanted to mention. Uh, if you ever take these apart, you don't want to risk the uh, the tappets falling out of the guide blocks. Just put a little bit, a little small O-ring across the two shafts of the tappets, and that will prevent them from falling out. So, uh, and you can do that when you're putting it back together too. But the boards are in really nice shape. All I'm going to do with them is just hone them out and hopefully it won't be a problem to find a set of pistons for it. I think that uh, a set from a standard Triumph 750 ought to fit in there. I'll just have to mic them up and make sure that, uh, that they do have the right uh, bore sizes that will give me the right piston clearance. How about that? That's Dave's sexy side stand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he he had a hard time getting his foot on the tip of the side stand when he was uh, parking the bike and that sort of thing. So we just put that that piece of copper pipe on the end of it. It's kind of ugly. I might have to uh, figure out something else to put on there so we can actually get his foot on the stand without that ugly old piece of pipe on the end. But that's just that's just me being picky, I guess. I don't know. But, Anyway, I've got to order parts for it and uh, clean up a bunch of this stuff, get it ready to go back together while I'm waiting for parts. When the parts come in, why well, I'll do up another video. So thanks for watching. You can like, uh, share, and subscribe if you want to. Anyways, uh, when I get those parts, I'll be putting up another one. Bye-bye.